Get your hands up, boy! about the Shagath from Lovecraft Country. But before I start this video, I just want to say that I am very new to the Lovecraft mythos. I am deeply interested in the universe. So when reading up more on Shagath, not only did I find the correct way to pronounce it, but I also learned that the monster that we see in Lovecraft Country is technically not a Shagath. The creatures as depicted in Lovecraft Country are far more beast-like in appearance. They're definitely not amorphous. They have four beasty legs, a very muscular body, and lots of eyes on the top of their head. They also function more like protective guard dogs, creatures that will guard their masters no matter what. As you can see in a breakdown of the VFX, the creatures have a sloping appearance, almost monkey-like. They have a distinct head, covered in eyes, and they have animalistic jaws. They're clearly primarily quadrupedal, and even though they have gills on their head, near the base of their neck, it is clear that these creatures are predominantly land creatures. They have very thick bones for supporting their weight, and powerful hind legs to propel them when they're running. Their tail seems to act as a rudder that helps them keep balance when taking sharp turns. They have massive sharp claws on their hind legs for traction and for climbing, and their muscle and hide is very thick. Even though there's some basic similarities with these creatures being creepy and them having lots of eyes, that's where the similarity ends. The real Shagaths were not beast-like and were more like giant blobs with mouths full of sharp teeth and tendrils from all over their body. They in fact did have many eyes, but they were more amorphous. As for what H.P. Lovecraft said when describing them, it was a terrible, indescribable thing, vaster than any subway train, a shapeless conjurus of protoplasmic bubbles, faintly self-luminous, and with myriads of temporary eyes forming and unforming as pustules of greenish light all over the tunnel-filling front that bore down upon us, crushing the frantic penguins and slithering over the glistening floor that it and its kind had swept so evilly free of all litter. Based on how he describes it, I would take a gander and say that the creature from the movie The Thing, or the franchise The Thing, was more of a Shagath than the creatures we saw in Lovecraft Country. It is said that the Shagaths were created by the Elder Things, being amorphous. And being amorphous, they could take on any shape they needed, making them very versatile within their aquatic environment. Which would explain why the Shagaths we see in Lovecraft Country have gills on their heads. as we can see right there. It is said that although the Shagoth were able to understand the Elder Things language, they had no real consciousness and were controlled through hypnotic suggestion. The Shagoths also build the underwater cities of their masters. Over millions of years of existence, some Shagoths mutated and gained independent minds. Sometime after this, they rebelled, and eventually the Elder Things succeeded in quelling the insurrection, but thereafter watched them more carefully. By this point, exterminating them was not an option, as the Elder Things were fully dependent on them for labor and could not not replace them. It was during that time that, despite their master's wishes, they demonstrated an ability to survive on land. So after having seen or heard that, I understand why they would use this version of the Shagoth in Lovecraft Country. And by that logic, I'm not a hardcore Lovecraftian fan because I don't have as much knowledge as people who have been following for many years, but I would think by that logic, the Shagoths that we see in Lovecraft Country can still be considered Shagoths just the ones that adapted to live on land. So when we talk about Shagaths in this video, we're talking about these renditions of them. The more animalistic How to Train Your Dragon version. They seriously ripped that off from How to Train Your Dragon. They're not even trying to hide it. So let's explore these creatures and attempt to ascertain what life is like for them outside the confines of their screen times. <laughs> When we first see the Shagath, they appear animal-like, and the first thing we know is that their skin is very clear, sporting a whitish appearance, similar to that of troglobites or creatures that live in caves. Since they are always bathed in darkness, there's no need for them to have any melanin. 
this makes their skin pretty weak. And it's crazy because even though these creatures are very formidable and durable, the light hurts them. It's like their only weakness that seems to physically harm them. In the show, whenever the characters use light or any method of things that give light, like flares, it drives the Shoggoth away or keeps them at bay, kind of like vampires. To immediately get away, the Shoggoth will either run away or immediately burrow under the earth. These surreal creatures tend to use the earth as a tunneling system or a way of fast travel. They are so powerful that not only can they burrow under the ground and break through even the most solid and toughest areas, but they can perform that action so proficiently as though they're swimming through water. Water, and they can do it quickly. Their powerful forearms and claws are not just used for attacking, but also making their way through the ground. Having gills not only suggests that they can live underwater or probably originated from an aquatic environment, but that they also come from the deep where there's little to no light. However, their firm terrestrial structure seems to indicate otherwise, coupled with the fact that they have eyes adorning their front top side. Their very sharp teeth and insanely powerful jaws indicate that not only are they carnivores, but they can easily slice through bone and maybe even even the toughest shells of underwater organisms. Their mouth being shaped like a circle can also play a part in them eating their way through the ground, cutting through rock and hard substances to facilitate them being able to dig through quickly. They possess a forked tongue which seems to be used mostly for intimidation reasons. It's also possible that they use it as a method of feeling around, or from reaching very small morsels in hard to reach places. They have a long, thin tail with a fine pointed shiv at the end for impaling flesh. In the water, it would probably be fish. Their long forearms are not only powerful enough to attack, but also to grab and throw, and they have opposable thumbs. Despite being fiends of the dark, they have eyes which they actively use to see their surroundings. And even though these things seem to be super predators, having eyes on the tops of their heads seem to indicate that in a natural environment, they would have something that also preys on them. Now I know this is going off in the fictional sense from what they originally were, amorphous shapes of horror, but if they adapted to live on land from the water, there must have been a transition towards their evolution. Maybe as they came up from the deep, they had to worry about creatures coming down on them to hunt them, and that must be the reason why their eyes are situated near the top side of their heads, upper backs, and shoulders. I do like the idea of there being other magical mysterious cryptids in the deep that these creatures are probably afraid of. Underneath the Shagath are a smaller pair of appendages that look like the abducting legs or rapturalis, of praying mantids. Front legs that have evolved to form claw-like structures for hunting. Being that in the case of the praying mantis, it's used for stabbing and grabbing, especially when it comes time to hunt for a much larger prey, or simply to prevent their prey from escaping, it is possible these Shagoth, when on the ocean floor, will plant their four major feet sturdily on the ocean bottom, and then use these claw-like structures to sift through the sand and grab whatever's there. Notice, in this scene, those little claws are planted firmly in the body, as if to keep it pinned down, while allowing the Shoggoth to stay upright and sturdy. The Shoggoth are also expert climbers, and usually stay out of the view of humans unless they want to be seen or unless they're actively hunting. Do the Shagoth eat? If we're going off a magical basis, these creatures don't need to eat. Then again, there's a saying that anything that is said to be magic is just science that we haven't explained yet. The Shagoth seems to kill without purpose, but their body plan seems to indicate that they do eat. It's possible that they might not feed as regularly as we think. It's also possible that the Shagoth can survive on a small morsel for long periods of time. <laughs> In Lovecraft Country, the temperament of these creatures have been mostly portrayed as violent, aggressive, and voracious. However, we've only seen them behave that way when they're under strict orders to guard, protect, or attack a target. Usually the target is anything that is not what they consider to be family or their masters. The Shagoth all stay region locked to their area and will not venture outside of it. This was probably due to the spell that was cast in the show to keep them in a certain area and to keep people out. But it makes sense that if these creatures existed naturally, they would want to stay in a certain Certain territory where there's not a lot of human interaction. They would probably become one of those SCP cases where people take the specific back road through this area and then they're never heard from again. At other times we see the Shagoth, they're tame and behave similar to pet dogs. They're totally loyal.
steel, and will take anything head on to protect their masters. In the Lovecraft Country show, these creatures have a magical element to them, and so conventional weapons don't work. Things like guns, trying to stab the creature, all don't seem to have any effect. But it doesn't mean these specific creatures can't be killed. It's possible that they probably have a very high regeneration ability, and under certain circumstances, maybe like dropping a nuke on them, they would die. It's also possible that sucking the oxygen out of an area might also kill them, as they need gills. But most importantly, they are shown to be irritated and in agony when light in any form is shown on them. That being said, if they had a mission to take down a target and the target has light trained on them, the Shalgoth will continue to try and find ways around the target to get to them no matter what instead of retreating. The other thing that's curious about the Shalgoth is how they travel. It almost seems as though they are teleported via magic to a place when they are needed but exist normally living their lives somewhere else. We know that they burrow underground and they do so very quickly, but I think the reason they are able to protect their master so adequately is that they know how to follow from a distance. Anything that they're bound or loyal to, they will follow without being seen. And in the show, when the Shagoth's master instructed it to stay still and to stay at home, the Shagoth stayed, but it was clear that the Shagoth had been following. So when one of the family members was in danger, we saw that it wasn't able to get there immediately right away, but it got there pretty fast, which indicated that it had to have been following from a safe distance away, always keeping its eye on its master. That means it is very possible that in certain situations, the master would still get hurt, but the Shagoth would do everything in its power to make sure that doesn't happen, like a protective mother keeping at a safe distance and watching over her children. Since they also have the ability to travel under the earth, they probably can't teleport per se, but can follow at a safe distance under the ground or through the trees and not be heard until they're needed. This also makes these creatures ridiculously stealthy, especially when you consider how large and bulky they are. It seems that Shagoth are also very intelligent and have the ability to understand when their master is in danger the way that dogs or cats would. creatures are very plentiful, but how do they replace their population? How do they replete their numbers? The Shagoths probably have some sort of social ties or hierarchy. They do have the ability to vocalize, which is indicative of creatures that usually speak to each other that way, but we don't really actively see them speaking to each other. They seem to congregate for a sensual purpose, to take care of a target, or to keep something out of their environment. But do they mate behind the scenes? Do they pair up and decide to take each other out on a nice fancy feast? Probably not, because they already have a method of reproduction, at least per what we see in the Lovecraft Country show. Like vampires or werewolves, if a Shalgoth bites or scratches someone, the victim starts to turn into one shortly after. They get a bad fever, they get pale, get nauseous, and then start to transform into a Shalgoth. They don't really essentially die, they just become the creature. So then most of the creatures that we're seeing in the movie were probably once human. But so then, what were the originals? This probably was an adaptation that the Shalgoths employed to quickly spread their numbers and build up their population. But what would make them have to adapt to have this method of pleading their populations, unless they were being fed on or they have a very short lifespan, which they don't. These creatures actually live a very long time. For them to be able to reproduce so easily when it's a matter of a bite or a scratch, and the earth not to be littered in them, there must be a cutoff point. They must all choose to exist somewhere else where they are preyed on by some other creature. And that begs the question, where would this place be? We see that these creatures come up from the ground, but is there a specific hollow earth in their universe that the show characters are just not aware of? It's possible. It's possible that they would also live in what we would call hell, deep under the earth in a pocket of the earth that is fiery, which is weird because fire doesn't hurt them, but light does. Or maybe it's different based on the version of Shagoth it is. The dark mode Shagoth might have more melanin and so light doesn't affect him as much. So I would imagine if they existed naturally that there would be different breeds of Shagoth based on the biome or environment that they hail from. It's possible that some may even exist in more lighter areas. And there might be even furry ones that exist in cold areas. Either way, this is a fun, amazing creature and there's just so much mystery laden around these things. Oh, there's one more interesting tidbit about the Shagoth, at least the ones in Lovecraft Country. Another method used to reproduce the Shagoth is to utilize cows. 
for newborn Shagath. Why? <laughs> it's possible that the initial ones are born this way. And maybe I'm wrong, but it seemed as though the cow died shortly after. And I don't see why that would happen unless the creature took too many nutrients from the cow or killed it on the way out. It didn't seem to be chewing the cow on the way out like a chestburster. The cow just seems as though it was a surrogate. And it would make sense that their way of doing things, meaning the people who are in control of the Shagoths, would be in such a way to invest in the cow's welfare so the cow could birth more of these creatures. For the sake of this video though, and for the whole theory and exploration of the Shagoths, we're gonna exclude this from the uh, true canon of the Lovecraft Country Shagoths, because first of all, this element of it was not in the original source material. Secondly, it was done for the purpose of building on Christina's character, and I think based on the way that she looks and behaved in the scene, they were trying to parallel her with Daenerys, Mother of Dragons, while this woman is the mother of Shagas. It is the only time we see her this close to something and affectionate towards it, but then it's never used again. So for the sake of reproduction, we can count this as one of those bioengineering flukes or weird experimentation with animals that wouldn't occur naturally. Shagas, probably in their natural element or as natural as we can say they are, truly do bite their victims so that more can be changed. Unless, of course, they straight up kill the victims. In this way, they are less like Lovecraftian monsters and actually more like vampires. So that's all for now. I would love to do more videos. It would be interesting to know what these creatures would be like when interacting with other monsters. And if they didn't have a halo of magic around them, preventing them from being injured, how would they fare? How durable would they truly be up against some of the most nefarious creatures or monsters from pop culture? Thanks so much for watching. This has been Ulturi. You ask, we answer.